So this will be, I emphasize, a non-spoiler survey of the critics and YouTubers and others who have chimed in on Ant-Man. And the news is mostly negative, but there is some contingent of these critics who are very positive. So what is the deal and what are the ups and downs of Quantum Manea? The positives are there seems to be at least a rock solid 30 minutes in this otherwise pretty frantic mess of film. And last time I checked Rotten Tomatoes, it was below 60%. I usually don't care about Rotten Tomatoes, but the numbers are pretty shocking. So this is one of the lowest ranking MCU films by critical standards. So what is their beat? If you are a fan of the Wasp, there is not a lot of the Wasp. So there is a problem of advertising. This is an Ant-Man Wasp sequel. It's really not. It's really an Ant-Man daughter sequel, but the daughter has her own problems and we'll get to those in more detail. The really good parts are Kang, again, by most critics. Paul Rudd is still very funny, although some of the jokes don't land, but some critics are divided. They think the first part is really good, but the second part is really weak. Others are like, no, the first part is very boring, but the second part starts to pick up. About at least a third of this film will work for most audiences, but which third? You'll have to decide for yourself. First, second, or third part. And the trailer is very misleading that we spend a lot of time quote, in the real world. No, they get to the quantum realm very quickly. But that may have been damaging to the film. So what exactly is the issue? I guess it's that there is a conflict between the daughter and Paul Rudd, but they don't really spell it out. And if you know my channel, I've been very, very severe and critical towards Endgame and Infinity War. I think they're a bunch of pieces of garbage, but I do recognize they had some good elements. The one good thing I did like about Endgame was, paradoxically, was Ant-Man and his relationship to his daughter, which I thought was very sincere. It was very well done. I liked the actress who played the daughter. I liked how Ant-Man was very organically alienated from being away so long. Unfortunately, they took all that character growth and decided to just throw it away. And we were getting a very radically retconned new daughter. And she seems to want to help a revolution in the quantum realm for no reason. She just wants to help them. And although the trailer seems to show she's going to struggle and have a lot of battles and a lot of fights, and I usually avoid this term, but there's probably no way around it. I think 99% of the time, don't say this, but yeah, she's basically a Mary Sue character. Really, nothing really happens to her. They make it seem as if she's really in danger. There's not a lot of Dave. Again, this is not spoiler, so I won't get into it, but yeah, they make it seem as if there's a lot of things at stake. Not really. This is what it is. It's a fluffy silly fun sci-fi epic that's what you want that's what you're gonna get a lot of the jokes don't work some of them will modok is basically a kind of jar jar character they just make fun of him if that works for you you'll like that i am usually a comic book purist but i'm not a modok purist so i'm kind of indifferent there but i don't think this is a good sign that they keep taking these really great frankly male characters like taskmaster and modok really don't do anything with them is this going to be as bad as taskmaster i us wait to see for myself the negatives are much stronger than the positives. There are a lot of positives, but the negatives are also very strong. Also along the positives are, they are giving you a lot of visual splendor, but it is very derivative of Star Wars and Dune. So this feels a little light in terms of what it's supposed to be about. You do realize that Kang is a dictator. He should be overthrown, but they don't really give you a lot of details about the nature of oppression. Why is there a revolution? Who are these characters? So a lot of things are just being set up. And the actual Ant-Man movie of this MCU Godzilla monstrosity kind of gets lost. Finally, there are two, yes, count them, two post credit scenes, but apparently people are divided even there. Some people think they really save the film, they're really standouts, so stay for those, or, or they kind of undermine the whole Kang story. They're packing a lot of action and jokes, but a lot of it does not work for most people. But those are the critics, so, so that's where we are. So at least half of everyone who has tasted Quantumania are like, yeah, it's kind of meh. A little bit meh plus, but a lot of other people are like, it's meh and minus, and you don't have to see it, but decide for yourself. And that's where we are with Quantumania, according to the critics.